Hello everyone, my name is Aviva, and if you're new to this channel, hello, nice to meet you. We're in my kitchen on the floor right now. I wanted to film outside, but there are just too many sounds, too many distractions, so here we are next to the refrigerator. It's very professional over here. I'm an aspiring professional screenwriter. I've written seven features so far, and I haven't sold any of my work yet, but I'm really trying to make that happen. My goals for 2021 would be just to continue to write, acquire representation, and sell a script, or multiple scripts, or all my scripts. Let's just shoot for the stars. That's a little bit about me. I've worked in some feature films um, in Seattle as an intern and then a production assistant, and that kind of opened up my eyes to the magical world of screenwriting and filmmaking and I just was hooked ever since. I made like a thread on Twitter about all these screenwriting resources that um, I've collected over the years and also especially in 2021 I've just found a lot of different screenwriting related resources which have been really amazing. And I just made a thread to share with my friends on Twitter because I've you know made a lot of screenwriting friends this year through the platform of Twitter which was very surprising and wonderful. And somehow this tweet just like blew up, which was so exciting. Usually, you know, my tweets get like one like, you know, maybe five likes, I don't know. Not that it really matters, but this one has like 1500 likes or something. And every few minutes I get a new comment or another like or a new follow. And it's just really exciting to connect with all these screenwriters online. So if you are watching this video from Twitter, hello. Nice to e meet you. I just wanted to turn that tweet, basically that tweet thread, into a full um, video because I just wanted to talk more about it and I have a few other resources that I missed in the thread, so stay tuned even if you've read the thread that rhymes. There, there might be some new stuff that you didn't know about. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So my first resource, my favorite place to meet screenwriters lately on the internet has been Twitter and specifically using the hashtag PipelineWriters. So Pipeline is a contest I've actually entered this year, so fingers crossed I place, we'll see. And they host this like happy hour every Friday around six-ish. And it's just a time where you get to meet new screenwriters and answer questions about screenwriting and just like connect with people who are into the same things as you, which is screenwriting and filmmaking and Hollywood and all that. So you just type in the hashtag and you just start interacting with people who are using that hashtag and it's super fun. And I've already made like quite a few online friends through that and I've already exchanged feedback with them. It's been like a way to basically find like a virtual creative writing class. Like it brings me back to my college days of being in creative writing classes where we exchange feedback and just like chat about writing. So that's been really, really fun and I highly recommend that hashtag. My second favorite resource on the internet is Facebook. So, you know, Facebook kind of gets a bad rap and honestly, I would, I would be off Facebook if it weren't for the groups and also just like keeping in contact with people and being able to contact them easily. But definitely the Facebook groups have redeemed the platform for me. So the first Facebook group that I really, really recommend would be Writing with Kaya. And this one is not open to everyone, so it's open to female identifying screenwriters. And it's been great so far. I've been part of it for a few months and she hosts secret knock calls, she calls them. And basically once a month, um, she hosts these Zoom calls that you can attend. She has successful producers, directors, screenwriters there, and you can interview them and ask them, well, she interviews them, but you can ask them questions at the end. I've only attended one so far, but I'm really excited about the next one that's happening. I've just connected with some really wonderful people in that group, so I definitely recommend that one. The second group I really recommend is called Writing for Holiday Movies. And, you know, the title's pretty self-explanatory. It's for screenwriters who are interested in writing like Hallmark style features, you know, anything about Christmas, Hanukkah, any of the holidays. And it's just been so much fun to connect with people who are specifically interested in that genre because I totally am interested in that genre. But it took me until this year to really realize that it was such a hot genre. Like I just didn't really realize that there was such a high demand for Christmas and Hanukkah movies 
and I've now written a Hanukkah feature and a Christmas feature and I plan on writing definitely a few more if not many more hopefully <laughs> if I come up with some really good ideas. That group is really helpful to talk about how to find Hallmark producers and Hallmark style producers and just learn more about the craft and all of that. So the last group I'm going to recommend is The Screenwriting Life and it's connected to the podcast which is also called The Screenwriting Life and it's hosted by Lorian McKenna and Meg Lafoff. I hope I'm saying her name right. I'm sorry if I'm not, but I think I am. That group is really great. I've connected with some writers through there, I believe. And then there are two more groups that I was just added to, so I can't like fully recommend them yet, but they seem great. I'm just a newbie, so I I barely interacted with anyone on them. The first one is called the Female Writers Society, and then the second one is called LA TV Writers, and I will link those both down below. They both seem really promising and fun. Now the next resource, the next category of resources would be pitching. So I'm totally new to this for the most part. I had no idea about this until 2021, but there are websites where you can pitch producers, and it does cost money, but I think it's a really cool way to get your foot in the door, and I'm hoping it will pan out into something really, really good. So fingers crossed. So my first platform that I've been using has been Virtual Pitch Fest and also called VPF. The website's really straightforward. All you do is you pay money <laughs> and you get to pitch in writing um, one of your scripts to a producer or manager or agent of your choice. So that's really cool because they have such amazing talent on there. I forgot to add that Virtual Pitch Fest is also really cool because, first of all, the producer or agent or manager that you contact with your pitch has to respond within five business days, which is super fast and great. It's also cool because if you uh, just contact, cold email a producer, they might either, first of all, just never see the email or you know just automatically delete it. Or they might respond saying that they do not accept unsolicited material. Um, I've had that quite a few times. So Virtual Pitch Fest ensures that you can actually pitch you know, that producer, that agent, that manager your script and you'll hear back and they accept unsolicited material. So win-win. I've pitched quite a few this year. I've gotten a lot of no's, I've gotten some yeses, meaning I can send my script to the producer or agent or manager of my choice. And um, fingers crossed that one day I'll get that dream email where someone wants to meet with me or wants to read more of my work or, you know, wants to buy my script, which is the ultimate goal. The next platform that I've been using is called Inktip. And this one's a little different than Virtual Pitch Fest. Um, you also pay money, and basically you get to use the website as a platform to host your script. So you can post as many scripts as you want, you know, it costs more for each one. And basically producers who are part of the Ink Tip network, um, vetted producers and I think managers and agents too, but I've mainly seen producers on there. They look for different scripts that they potentially want to buy. And um, if your script fits and they're interested in the log line or the synopsis, or they just, they're interested in it, they have the choice of downloading it and you're alerted every time a producer or production company views your script, every time they view the log line, the synopsis, and then if they download it, you are also alerted with an email, which is exciting to get. So far, I've only gotten two downloads, but you know what? That's exciting, and I think we should all celebrate the little wins. I did want to add that also Inktip has a preferred newsletter that you can subscribe to, and that's another way of getting your work out there. That's where they have an email of all these uh, postings from producers who are looking for specific content. So they'll post if like a producer is looking for a 30 minute drama about dogs. And then the last platform I've been using to get my work out there is called ISA. And that stands for the International Screenwriters Association. It's really a wonderful website, I highly recommend. This one you also have to pay a membership fee. I believe it's about $10 a month and you basically submit the script you want according to uh, listings that producers post on there, basically. So if a producer is looking for a rom-com set in 1993 and it features a black dog named Bear and you happen to have that script, 
I actually don't have that script, but it would be a good script, I bet. Um, then you submit that script to the producer in hopes that they will want to buy it. So now we're moving on to podcasts and I have a few favorites. The first podcast that I discovered this year is called Screenwriting Life and it's also hosted by Lorian McKenna and Meg Lafoe, who I mentioned earlier, who have the like um, related Facebook group. It's a really good podcast. I love it and I have so many episodes I need to catch up on but I listen to it when I can and it's just really really interesting to hear from two professional screenwriters who really understand the craft and understand how to pitch and just the business of it all and it's super inspiring and motivating and I really really recommend it. And then my OG favorite would be Script Notes which is probably a podcast you've heard of if you've been in the screenwriting world for a while and that is a podcast hosted by Craig Mazin and John August who are also two very successful screenwriters who really understand the business and have been writing for a very long time and it's a super good podcast and there are hundreds of episodes so you never get tired or run out of content from them. The next category I'm going to talk about later in a different video probably um, and that is classes. So I haven't taken that many online classes, but I really do want to take more. I've heard really, really good things about the Sundance online courses. So I just applied for two of them, one about comedy and one just about story structure, I think how to outline that kind of thing. And uh, I really hope I'm accepted because they seem really amazing and they're all taught by working screenwriters, which is amazing. So I'm really excited and I hope that they're good and I hope that I'm accepted because, you know, I, I don't know how competitive it is to get in. I don't really know that. So I just applied. Stay tuned. Um, but my screenwriting friend, Serena, says that they're really, really good classes. So I hope that I'm accepted and I'll keep you guys posted. Books. So many good books. I'd say that like most of my screenwriting knowledge comes from books. So the first book that I highly recommend, of course, with, this is like the screenwriting bible to me, and that is Screenplay by Sid Field. The Foundations of Screenwriting, a step-by-step -step guide from concept to finished script. The reason Screenplay is my favorite screenwriting book is because Sid Field just simplifies everything. He is just a very straightforward writer. He teaches you about the plot points he believes every screenplay should hit. And I just really like his vibe. I'm a fan. I also love his note card method that he talks about that a lot of screenwriters utilize and I do as well. Every time I write a script, I outline it first um, via note cards. So each act has a certain amount of note cards and each note card is equal to a scene. So act one is about 14 cards, act two is about 28 cards, and then act three is back to about 14 cards. And yeah, I just highly recommend this book. I think it's it's just the best. The yeah, next book that I discovered this year as well it was actually recommended to me by the Austin Film Festival and that is The Hollywood Standard. This is the second edition. It's a really good resource to have and I have a Kindle which I'm going to talk to you guys about but I recommend getting this one like you know in in a physical form because um, there are a lot of pages with like sections from screenplays and you just get a better idea about what things should look like and basically this is like a book about how to properly format a script which is so important and just something that you can learn kind of intuitively by reading scripts and that sort of thing and writing your own and using the software but there are a lot of rules that can make your script look way more professional if done correctly so I really recommend this book I've used it now for the past, for all the scripts I've written since I discovered this book, I just really recommend it. While I'd like to say that, you know, formatting and all that doesn't really matter, it really does matter. The story is obviously really important, the dialogue, all of that, the characters, but if your script looks unprofessional, then people aren't going to take you seriously, and then you're just way less likely to get your foot in the door. So, highly recommend reading this book, and I highly recommend just reading PDFs of actual scripts that have been made into feature. So there are three other books that I have on my Kindle that I want to tell you guys about. So the first book I want to mention is Make Your Script Sellable, 
The Art and Business of Screenwriting by Cara J. Russell. She definitely has the type of career I aspire to have. She wrote uh, the movie on Netflix, The Night Before Christmas with Vanessa Hudgens. And she has some really interesting and fun projects in the works, according to IMDb Pro. And this is a good opportunity to recommend IMDb Pro, which I forgot to film myself saying. But that has been an amazing resource for me so far. You can basically research projects that aren't publicly available yet. So, you know, the regular IMDb is also good research, but... If you have IMDb Pro, you can see what projects are in the works for different actors, producers, directors, and you can sometimes even find a producer's email through IMDb Pro. So you can do some cold emailing, and yeah, I'm a fan. It is pricey, but so far it has been worth it. Okay, let's get back to talking about her book, Make Your Script Sellable. And she just has a bunch of advice about how to write a good script, and then also the business side of things, how to pitch. She talks about screenwriting contests, how to network, credits, contracts, just like everything you need to know about the world of screenwriting. And it's just like a very approachable, um, good book that I highly recommend. So the next book I really recommend is called It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Hallmark, The Unofficial Guide to Writing a Made-for-TV Christmas Movie by Heather Hughes and Kate Wharton. And this one's amazing as well, obviously for people who are just interested in writing Hallmark style Christmas slash, you know, holiday movies, but really fun and kind of just opened my eyes up to the world of holiday movie writing. I really had no idea before this year that Christmas movies were just so lucrative and successful. And I just, I just, I knew about Hallmark, but I didn't really understand the extent of how many films are truly being made every year just for the holidays. So this book is just really a great summary of the genre itself and how to approach writing a Christmas movie or Hanukkah or holiday movie and it's also just really funny and as someone who loves a good holiday rom-com it's just it felt like this book was made for me so I definitely really recommend it if you're interested in that genre. And then the last book recommendation I have is called That's Not the Way It Works a no-nonsense guide to the craft and business of screenwriting by Bob Sainz. This also is kind of similar, um, but you know, also you should get both of them. Similar to Kara's book, just about how to write a good story and then also the business side of things, how to pitch, how to email producers properly, when to know when you should follow up and when you should just understand that you're being rejected, that sort of thing, which I've been learning. <laughs> he also talks about writing to budget, which is super helpful. There's a section on rejection. I need to read that one again. <laughs> um, just all sorts of things. So about the craft and then also about how to sell yourself, how to sell the script, all that jazz. So the next category of resources would be YouTube. So I really haven't discovered that much screenwriting YouTube out there. Let me know if I'm missing anything. I know I am. I really like Linda Barcy. She's a screenwriting teacher and she also got her MFA at USC for screenwriting and she just makes like really motivating, relatable screenwriting advice videos and just writing advice videos. So I really recommend her. She posted a video recently that she doesn't love the advice like a writer must write every day to be a writer. And I too don't love that advice and she just shares a lot of like writing truths that really resonate with me and make me feel less guilty about my writing style. I don't believe you have to write every day to be a good writer, especially in the world of screenwriting and most writing, except maybe poetry or the short story or something. You need time to brainstorm, to research, to do other things, to come back to your desk and write something good and begin to outline something good. Like I just don't see how you could possibly write every single day without any breaks and still have good things to write about. It totally depends on the person and I'm curious what you guys think about that phrase. Let me know in the comments down below if you believe that you need to write every day to be a good writer or to write, be a writer or if you need time in between to brainstorm, to do other things, to think about what kind of writing you want to do. So let me know. <laughs> I also really like Tyler Mowry's channel so I'll link that down below. He has a lot of great videos about the craft. He 
um, analyzes aspects of films I've seen. Like he had a really good one about Little Woman recently, and I will link that down below. I really like that one, the 2019 Little Woman. Also, I recommend my friend Sabrina's channel. She makes screenwriting vlogs, and she's always made me want to make more screenwriting videos, so I'm inspired by her. I also really like a channel on YouTube called Academy Originals, and they had this series in about 2014-ish called Creative Spark, and basically they would interview a successful screenwriter about his or her daily practices, career, writing philosophy, all of that, and it's so inspirational and every now and then I'll still just like click on a random video from that series and get really motivated and inspired. And my favorite video from that series that I will link down below that I also mentioned on Twitter is featuring Karen McCullough and Kirsten Smith and they are my favorite screenwriters of all time. I love them so much. They've made, they've written some of my favorite movies of all time including 10 Things I Hate About You, Ella Enchanted, She's the Man, The House Bunny, the list goes on, Legally Blonde. So a new really exciting resource for me this year has been becoming a member of the Northwest Screen Guild. So this is for people you know who live in the Pacific Northwest but um, basically you pay I believe it's $60 a year and you are able to attend all these amazing events that are all happening virtually right now obviously. And there's one coming up that is featuring writers from Grey's Anatomy, which I am so excited about. Also have a weekly screenwriting feedback group where you go on Zoom, because it's everything's virtual now, and you share the first 10 pages of your script when it's your turn. Like you don't go every week, but you get on a list and eventually when it's your turn, you share the first 10 pages or any 10 pages from anything you've written, and then everybody gives you feedback and it's super helpful and fun because you get to like read out loud other people's scripts and it is just super, fun and entertaining. Those are my resources for now. I probably will make another video like this at some point, especially if you guys are interested, as I continue to find more amazing platforms online. And I would just love to make more screenwriting videos in the future because I am really, really obsessed and it's fun to find a community of people who are equally obsessed as me. So if you enjoyed this video, please share it on Twitter, retweet, subscribe to my channel, and feel free to comment down below. Okay, I'll see you guys soon.